Uh, I used to come here when I was working at UNESCO prior to my arriving here for 20 years and nine days as the director of the International Hydrological uh, Program. My favorite destination of my missions was here uh, to come and just sheer accidents. My missions coincided with the parties which the students were organizing uh, here, the Latino nights which ended up 6 o'clock in the morning and people were still dancing out in the street. The Asians who did fantastic uh, performances, the Africans who did fantastic music in, in the theater and, and, and elsewhere. And then they did it together. And this is really the message what this institution would like to, to convey and encourage you to do, to do things together. We are all dependent. Politics, set aside. Conflicts, work on it to avoid it. And it has to start at a relatively young age, at, at your age. This institution has shown a many good examples where, where, where people who came from areas which were difficult politically for one reason or another still were able to work together in a, in a creative uh, spirit. UNESCO IHE is one of UNESCO's pillars in, in water. Ten years ago when the Director General, who was elected then and who is leaving next week and this afternoon as we speak, the new Director General of UNESCO will be enacted. Ten years ago, he's a Japanese diplomat, uh, he, he recognized that UNESCO had so many uh, priorities, almost uniformly distributed, that basically were no priorities at all. So he wanted to single out uh, a so-called principal priority for each major sector of UNESCO. Education sector dealt with education for all, which is a major, major program. The science sector concentrated on water. So over the past 10 years, UNESCO became really a, a fairly uh, sizable and, and powerful organ, powerful in, in the sense of serving uh, and powerful in resources, uh, became a, a very strong institution, which has three pillars. One of them, and this is the education pillar, is here, UNESCO IHA Institute for Water Education, which is an integral part of UNESCO. So we are now in international territory, if, if you wish. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to obey the laws and the customs of the, the local nation, the, 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 the host country, just the other way around. Then we have a, a, a science and uh, research program called the International Hydrological Program that works through uh, member states, 192 countries, and that produces all sorts of education material and research programs covering a wide range from the impacts of climate change on the hydrological cycle all the way down to, uh, to new areas such as uh, the importance of cultural diversity in integrated water uh, resources management. The third uh, arm the, or the third pillar of UNESCO is a UN system-wide program which is called the United Nations World Water Assessment Program. This is a program that produces the World Water Development Report every third year. And you will get copies in a, in a few days' time of the third report that has been released a couple of months ago in, 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 in Istanbul, in Turkey, during the World Water Forum. The principal objective of this report is to show a mirror. What is the world water situation and to what direction that situation is, is moving? And to act as an early warning facility for the political community and the policy-making community to call their attention that where are the areas where uh, intervention is needed, whether it's a political intervention in terms of uh, political negotiations over shared water resources, or uh, it is a, an investment in terms of money where uh, countries, particularly from the developing world, uh, would need uh, to invest into sewage treatment facilities and things like that. So that, that report is, uh, has a very important function and we would like to, uh, to have you closely involved not only as a user of the report but also as a contributor. Now next to that, next to the three major pillars, uh, the UNESCO has uh, set up 20 centers over the past uh, nearly 10 years that are dealing with specific aspects. For instance, and you, you will be connected to those centers during your, your studies, and you can, of course, use the facilities as well. One center, which was very late uh, addition, is, is the International Center on, on Water Hazard and Risk Management in Japan. There's another one 
which deals with uh, erosion and sedimentation in Beijing, China. There's another one that deals with arid zones, and the particular problems of arid zones in, in Cairo. There's another one which deals with arid zones of Latin America in La Serena, uh, Chile. There are many, many uh, institutes which are all forming a network with UNESCO IHE as the hub of this network. You may not know that you are now entering the largest international uh, water education facility. This institution has, has, uh, has much wider uh, programs than any other university in the world when it comes to water. It, it, it really covers a very wide range from managing institutions and governance all the way up to aquatic ecosystems management, conflict resolution, water supply, sanitation, you name it. Then, of course, you might ask yourself the question, why are there so many efforts with respect to water? Why is it that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, that water became so important? The answer is, re is, is relatively simple and is a message what we would like you, your generation, the generation that even comes after you, we would like to convey to the political decision-making bodies that water is going to be one, if not the most important issues in the 21st century. There are global drivers which are working without us knowing, and the results are coming in an accelerated fashion. One item which perhaps one needs to mention, and I'm sure you read it every day in the newspapers, is the impacts of climate variability and climate change. What our profession is examining, and some of you will certainly work at, will do a thesis work in this regard, is the impact of, of climate variability and change. Because as it is the hydrological cycle where most of the impacts will be felt, not that the temperature may go up in 100, 150 years by two and a half degrees. That's, that's not a big deal. The, the human body can still cope with it. But ecosystems, and particularly the hydrological cycle, are extremely sensitive to this change. Because very likely, and this is the big hypothesis we are all testing, very likely the hydrological cycle is accelerating. It's a very simple experiment to imagine that if there is more heat trapped in the atmosphere, there is more evaporation. If there is more evaporation, there is more probability, higher probability for clouds. If there is higher probability for clouds, there are higher probability for rain. If there is more rain, there is more runoff. If there is more runoff, there is more floods. End of the proof. It's very simple because there are many, many, I mean, oversimplified, of course, but there are many feedbacks and highly nonlinear processes which take place here, which need to be studied. But that's basically the question that needs to be, uh, needs to be addressed. If this is true, then, then, then there are a couple of issues where we have to start thinking right now. Is that very likely, because of this acceleration, the probability of the extremes will increase? 